Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today at Copa Community Day. Um, today, we're going to be talking about five tips uh, that we see as necessary to be a successful DevOps consultant. Um, but first, some intros. I'm Tom Gallo. Uh, I'm a senior director here at uh, Slalom Consulting. I've been with Slalom for eight years in the Salesforce ecosystem for almost 18. Uh, I'm a Salesforce CTA. Blanca? Hey, everyone. Blanca Leon Carter, also with Slalom in my third year as a consultant. Uh, newbie to the global DevOps team, um, but very excited to be doing this kind of work. And I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem since 2013. Thanks, Blanca. It's nice to see you. Uh, but first, we're going to thank our sponsors. Uh, Capato for putting this together. Always a great event uh, for Slalom for sponsoring as well. And our other sponsors for supporting uh, Salesforce DevOps and Salesforce consultants and our journey through the Salesforce ecosystem. On today's agenda, we're going to be asking, what is a DevOps consultant? Uh, what do we actually do? What are some of the things that we uh, are required to help our clients out with? And more specifically, uh, what are some tips for success? And this will apply to anyone either starting their career or somebody mature in their DevOps or Salesforce consulting career. Uh, there are key things that we see as essential for being successful. Things like keeping up with the current trends and technology, uh, building relationships at our clients and our and our and our organizations, understanding what project management is and its influences on DevOps, um, focusing on delivering measurable results, success metrics, and most importantly, setting expectations. Uh, where are we going to go? How are we going to get there? And by when? Um, so. What is a DevOps consultant? What do we actually do? Uh, to put it very succinctly, we help organizations improve their software development life cycles and their development processes, usually by implementing DevOps methodologies and tools. Um, as you know, the Salesforce ecosystem continues to get more and more complex, and the demand for Salesforce DevOps experts is constantly on the rise. Uh, the work that we do uh, helps to advise and uh, align organizations on how they can make the most of their Salesforce investment using tools like Capato. Um, but also, um, it's more of a change management exercise as well. How are we going to uh, bring our organization along for the ride and enforce and ensure that these uh, methodologies are continually iterated on and are going to bring about the change that we expected to? And I'll just add there, Tom, I know that you mentioned this earlier, but even if you're not a DevOps consultant, even, you know, wherever you are in your journey, it may be that you become the DevOps lead at your company, right? Um, you're not always a consultant, but I think a lot of what we will be speaking to in this session will apply to anyone who's leading a DevOps transformation. Mm -hmm. Whether whether they know it or not, right, Blanca? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's when the fun begins. Exactly. So first and foremost, uh, as I said earlier, the Salesforce ecosystem continues to evolve, as do the tools that are there to support the ecosystem and the platform. Um, so just like uh, Salesforce, uh, keeping up with uh, trends and best practices and, and skills on some of these applications and methodologies is essential for success. Um, things like conferences, Copa Community Day, uh, meetups, industry blogs, and publications uh, are great ways to understand what the current state is and where things are potentially going. Um, as well as there's a ton of online courses and certifications out there, uh, whether it's through Trailhead, through Capato, Success Community, um, or uh, generalized DevOps uh, methodologies and uh, tools. Certifications are probably the, the, the fastest way to uh, show that you are skilled up and are credible on what you know around DevOps, similar to Salesforce. But I think it's important to understand that there's going to be multiple ways to uh, attack this problem. Um, there are other vendors out there and other tools out there, some homegrown, some not, uh, that also might be a, a solution for you or your organization. So understanding where the lines are drawn between these tools and, and different methodologies just adds more tools in your tool belt when you're attempting to uh, bring an organization along for the DevOps maturity curve. 
And I'll just do a shout out, you know, Capado has a great community as well as the Trailblazer community, which has user groups in all areas of the globe. Um, so Tom and I both are user group leaders, um, Tom and Philly, myself in Chicago. Um, but, you know, a lot of the events are still being held virtual. So if, if there is a user group that has a DevOps topic and it is being, you know, being held virtual, virtual, come on in and join us from wherever you are. Absolutely. Because I think when you're able to network and raise some of your questions and, and share some of your pain points, you're going to hear, you know, perspectives from others that may be a little bit further along and they can share some, some guidance to help alleviate some pains, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Blanca. I uh, Salesforce isn't a glass slipper, but neither is DevOps, right? There's no perfect fit and you're going to uh, have to adjust and and kind of uh, 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 advise in a way that's going to be successful for you or your clients. Um, but it's important to know what's out there and doing that through uh, conversations, um, uh, hackathons, uh, and and conferences is a great way to really get a picture of what the ecosystem looks like and how it can help you. Yeah, let's go to the next one. I think this is very important. Um, as a consultant, we're we're usually in the middle of every aspect of people, process, and technology. And DevOps is literally the inter intersection of that. Um, as consultants, we we typically deal with um, various uh, representatives, either from the business, from IT, uh, from QA. And, and it's typically our responsibility to align all of these individuals on uh, our current path or our roadmap. Uh, one way to do that is to start making those relationships, start understanding and empathizing with um, the overall uh, organization and the individuals and what their motivations are. Actively listening is something we participate in uh, constantly here at Slalom. It's, it's one of the main uh, tenets of our delivery. Understanding and again, empathizing with the business and IT is gonna help everyone kind of aligned on that methodology. Uh, again, there's no right way. It's it's going to be what's well suited for that organization, and taking that organization and opinions and perspectives into account is going to be one of the ways to be very successful. Another area of uh, importance is training and mentorship. Um, DevOps is great when um, you're able to come in and and stand something up, and then there's somebody there to inherit it and or learn about it as well. I think some of us have learned about DevOps, we've certainly learned about Salesforce by just being in the right situation at the right time. So actively looking for champions and mentor and, and mentoring those champions, whether at the organization you're at or at clients you're at, uh, is a great way to start building that change management, that uh, uh, increased adoption. Um, uh, it helps to bring everyone along for the ride as opposed to you know, building something, implementing it and putting it in front of them and then expecting them to be successful. Yeah, this this one in building relationships, I think, can be tricky, right? A lot of times there's many relationships to build and it, it's more than just um, having the right people at the table. It's making sure that, as Tom mentioned, you are actively listening and thinking through how we can bring in the perspectives and the thoughts that all team members within this DevOps, um, you know, process. And it really is a mindset and a culture. And if everyone is not following that, you know, this is going to be a continuously iterative approach to improving always and getting better at DevOps. Um, so you, you really do need to, you know, model that for everyone who you're building relationships with, whether, you know, it's within your software development team, Maybe it's, you know, a hybrid team. You have some team members from the client side, some team members from your consulting side. Sometimes you have hybrid teams also that are like in different regions and they have different areas of specialty. So it really is about, you know, knowing who are the players in this and what can they bring to the table? What areas do they need more support in? And, and making sure that there is some level of skilling up because the teams that do better and have um, improved DevOps outcomes are the ones that are focusing on training, that are focusing on the collaboration and how can we help one another get better on this journey. Mm -hmm. And the teams that have the worst outcomes are ones that don't have the right champions. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the business, you know, thought that 
uh, this was a priority and for whatever reasons I have, you know, low bandwidth on who they identified to be the champion. And that can be a hurdle for the transformation that needs to come and for the support for the team. It also can be, you know, your liaisons within the specific specialty areas on the team that will be champions for that specific pod or that specific um, specialization. And if you have a false point in that, um, that also can be hurtful. So trust is really key and being able to understand that this is a family affair, like everybody has to go in and help out and, and shape the way that they're going to do it. And, and always be looking out for as things come up, it's not let's play the blame game and let's put this team or this person on the spot, you know, for something having gone wrong. It's how can we take a step back and look at, you know, what were the steps? What was the sequence? Maybe something was off. And really, how can we help each individual on the team get better so that overall the outcomes are better? Yeah. Um, that's the level of relationship building that I think we, we sometimes forget. Yeah. And as with any technology transformation, you know, knowing that the everyone is aligned from the beginning as to what um, will be delivered and how uh, reduces that blame game. Right. We're all in this together. It's, again, it's an intersection of many teams, each one having their own motivations and and day to day tasks. But being able to align on that North Star and saying this is where we expect to be at um, reduces that kind of friction between teams. Nobody, nobody wants to blame anybody. Uh, we're 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 working through these problems together and are going to identify whatever bottlenecks or or, or issues there might be uh, that could you know sideline or or or, or create drag in, in implementing something like a DevOps end-to-end uh, -end process. And sometimes I think that ear, like even if if the DevOps consultant has a good ear and is listening to the team, sometimes we don't always have the ears of the right stakeholders that need to support this work. And I think that that needs to be identified early on because that can also pose a risk, right? And you need to figure out the right approach on either figuring out how to adapt and cultivate a relationship in which they are lending their ear to hear out what the team needs and the support that they need to provide um, or you need to find someone else who can be an ally and, and fill that gap. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, why it is important to understand project management. I think here, you know, one of the emphasis is, and, and a lot of people go back and forth, well, you know, what's agile and how does that fall into, you know, with, with DevOps methodologies and actually, um, it, it does really go hand in hand if you ask us. I think part of software development, you need to understand that there's this strong emphasis on how do we prioritize and how do we collaborate together. Um, you know, one key thing is maintaining flexibility in the sense that sometimes you have to pivot based on what you're seeing for continuously, you know, incorporating feedback and continuously improving what it is that you're trying to build and how you are building it. Um, and again, this this mindset kind of complements that of what a DevOps culture that would be successful will be. So agile methodologies are actually, you know, very well suited for DevOps projects. Mm -hmm. Blanca, how many times have you um, worked with organizations and as you try to uncover where the bottlenecks are in the value stream, do you uncover the fact that their agile processes potentially aren't being done uh, correctly? May not be the right word, but efficiently, right? Um, yeah. And that's that's part of this. It's it's understanding how are these features being even, you know, uh, prioritized? Are they being prioritized? To say that I can't develop because of a bottleneck within my um, within my DevOps and within my workflow. It typically isn't about the technology. Sometimes it is, but but it's usually around alignment on what features are need to be developed and when. And when you think about end-to-end -end release management, it's critical to know when you're going to be deploying these features. Yes, everybody wants to get to that point where they're continuously deploying. They only have to think about it. But uh, lower maturity organizations usually require some kind of oversight to say, in X amount of time, we will we will be deploying X, Y, and Z. But that goes all the way back to whether or not that backlog has been groomed, whether those stories have been fully vetted out and there's acceptance criteria on them, not to just pull them in, create a feature and say, we need to do this because the business is demanding it. So understanding Agile 
getting advocates within the agile process um, and uh, finding a strong product owner are critical as well to ensuring that whatever technology or methodology put in place can be enforced by the the, the operations, the quality assurance and, and the product teams. And I'll just take it a step further. I mean, we see this all the time, right? Like when you think through agile, outside of tools like Apato and other DevOps tools, we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, Jira or, you know, ADO, like how, how are we tracking the tickets and those user stories? What's our ALM process? And, and a lot of times, part of what we need to think through um, is how can we put in some guardrails early, early on? Don't wait to the last minute when you're about to deploy and expect a tool like Capado to handle all your guardrails. It's a matter of thinking through how you're moving that story from one phase to the next as you're you know, developing, um, ensuring that you have the right check points as well as the guardrails along the way, whether they're more human intervention or something that you can rely on in terms of automation to help support the team. Um, but very much all the time, we're, we're taking a look at everything. It's not just, you know, how does one person do one thing and move it through? Like, what do these statuses in this ALM tool mean to everybody? And mm -hmm. do they understand if there's an integration with a tool like Pado, you know, how when they're making edits, their story status is it's, it's powering something in the back end. And we don't want those whoopsies because <laughs> it's a matter of, you know, training. How can we support to make sure, like Tom said, everybody is on the same page. And I think that as a DevOps consultant, you know, while you're looking at and paying attention to detail, you also need to be looking at what is the bigger picture, right? Like how does this DevOps initiative fit within to the larger program? and the roadmap. Yeah. And I think that is something that it can get tough to do, you know, depending on the busy work as a DevOps consultant, you really have to make sure that you're protective of time and allowing yourself the ability to also be flexible and take a step back and look at it more holistically. And sometimes that also means as you're taking a step back and looking at it more holistically, having side conversations and cultivating the relationships with those who are your champions and, and you know, executive sponsors for mm -hmm. this DevOps project. Yeah. DevOps is not a side hustle. It is a major organizational transformation. And to pull resources out of one team to try and manage this, not as a project, um, inevitably creates failure. So understanding what resources are available, individuals are available, what headcount is necessary to support a tool like Capado and the end-to-end -end, uh, implementation of this is essential. Uh, and again, that bigger picture just may not be the right time to do it. So to also understand, maybe maybe set your, set, set your low expectations first, because that's all we can actually do in the next six months, but still get to some place to, to Blanca's point where you're identifying the principles of what you're trying to do. And even if they're manual, Right? you're still going to be in a better place in the future when you automate or track these things um, that are related to project management. Uh, so that way you can then kind of move faster as your headcount improves, as you hire more people, as you find a DevOps or a release manager or an engineer. Um, you just have to be aware that organizations have limited budget and limited time, and, and uh, this has to fit into it somehow. And I think that's a good segue, right? Because there's a lot to take into consideration. There's a lot of moving pieces, different players. Um, it, it is a big challenge. And I think um, I'll go ahead and jump over to the next slide. But you'll you'll start asking, well, where in the world do we start then? How, how mm -hmm. do we know, Tom, like what phases or, or what to prioritize over the other? And I think that this deck really means a lot and we're not capturing enough information around how we really should be focusing on delivering measurable results here because we probably could have a whole series of sessions around that. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, back to some of what we've already covered, understanding and aligning with the business, their priorities and their KPIs, right? I think it's not enough for a software development team to look at what metrics are most important to them but also how does this roll up into the overall business, right? And, and where the business is trying to go. Um, are they trying to focus on improving security? Are they trying to focus on, you know, delivering faster to, you know, increase the 
um, either business users who are using the system or customers who are using the system, you know, they want to improve that usability for them. You have to always, um, as you're, you know, collecting these metrics and looking at the data that you have around DevOps, make sure that they're always in alignment with the overall priorities and KPIs of the business. And I hear all the time, well, I don't know where to find this data. I don't, I don't know where to find how we're doing in, in these areas. And I say that jokingly um, because I think it's okay to understand that you are not alone. There are so many other teams that are in the same you know, bucket trying to figure out how to navigate this all and um, you know, use the feedback loops. You know, have lines of communications from team members to provide feedback, get feedback from everywhere you can and start to collect the data if you're not already collecting it and, and making sure that analysis is an ongoing thing, right? It's not something that you just do one big pool of data collection and analysis and then it stays stagnant and you're never looking at feedback again. That's, that's not what we're saying. This is something that should be very intentional and it's how you're going to best know that you have the checks and balances that as a DevOps consultant, you are really looking at not just a small segment of your stakeholders, but you're taking feedback from a variety of your stakeholders mm -hmm. as it relates to um, the product and DevOps. So success can be measured in some um, of these metrics. These are not all of them, but they're some of the key ones. So deployment frequency, how often are you deploying? Lead time is from the time, you know, a story or, or, or uh, part of work is committed, how quickly is it getting to production? Mean time to recover is the nasty one that we hope we never need to think of. But the reality of it is we should be think of, thinking about it always and be prepared is, you know, if something goes wrong and there is some kind of failure, how can you revert back, roll back to a state that's stable and, um, I think that also has room, you know, as your team changes and as your processes change, the way that you're approaching how you're collecting metrics and how you can get ahead of the game um, is going to keep, you know, empowering these metrics to grow and get better over time. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're always asked, what are, what are, what are other clients doing? What is everybody else doing? And, and yes, there's absolutely value that you can al align to that say, this is, these are your goals. But understanding, again, the, the maturity of a client, understanding where they're at, um, they may not even be able to tell you what lead time is, you know? So it's our jobs to bring that thought leadership uh, to some of these stakeholders, to some of these champions. Sometimes we're involved even before they've made a decision uh, and they're talking with Capato. Uh, so we have to enable them to be able to create those measurements to for them to get what they need to be able to say, yes, we should invest in this. It's going to improve quality. It's going to improve velocity. Um, it'll make things a lot easier for our teams. Uh, I think the other thing to consider, especially with Salesforce, some of these uh, motivations might be very tactical. I can't refresh a sandbox. It takes me three weeks to refresh a full sandbox. How do I make that better? Right? Why, why am I struggling with that? Um, I have a sandbox I haven't refreshed in over a year. Right. So so as you look at, um, you know, implementing Capado, uh, looking at the overall environment strategy starts uncovering other influences, whether they're at downstream systems, data issues, um, just just deployment problems drift between these environments. And then you start really digging into these processes that could improve and then the technology to support that. So bringing that thought leadership and experience to the table not only gives them the confidence that a tool like Capato is going to help them out, but they are going to be able to see that light, be able to get to that point where they're, they are doing things better and faster and, and at better quality, but it's a long road ahead. So, so just helping to um, court them in that process, giving them the tools they need and the recommendations they need to get to that sweet state of, I can look at the door metrics. I can look at my value stream and know exactly how well we're doing and report back on that. And let's jump into expectations. I think <laughs> that's that my is favorite a one. Fantastic segue there. Um, so thinking through setting expectations, you know, as we've mentioned quite a few times, DevOps is not a sprint. This is not something you just jump into and it's like 
you know, already done and, and it's not something that you have a magic wand for. Um, this is a true journey. It's, you know, going to have its ups and downs and all arounds and good times and hard times. But in the end, you will come out stronger as a team um, when you are following some of these tips that we are sharing. And again, aligning and documenting expectations is increasingly important. The business and the team needs to understand what is the value in, in making sure that, you know, we're investing in DevOps. What What's What's the benefit for each and every person who's a part of um, your stakeholder groups, right? Um, and, and also understanding what is achievable, what is most important, and, you know, what is the timelines that you have, right? I think um, keeping a pulse on DevOps maturity levels is important, but um, to come in and think you could do something in a big bang, I think, um, is not always a good approach. I would say, in fact, most often it's the worst approach you could do. Um, I would say really, really think about it, you know, as if you were to build a home, you know, how do you start planning for that? How do you start um, getting everyone in order who needs to take part in building that home? Um, so this kind of goes into, it is a collaboration, right? This is something that is always going to be evolving. It's not something that, you know, it's going to be, static, you know, for X amount of months. No, this is something that is very fluid. You have to pivot as things arise and you uncover other city potholes, I like to call them, but they give you a little bit of, of a rough ride on the journey and, and just make sure that you're always looking at the feedback and looking at your metrics to identify bottlenecks and other, you know, failure points that come up that maybe you weren't able to, you know, foresee. Um, and if you can envision them, plan for them as you know early as possible is important. Uh, I like this point here on you know keeping a strong pulse on the maturity level of the organization. I think this helps to put things in perspectives and understand that you're really seeing what the true reality of it is at the time that you're coming into work, um, you know, with a specific client um, or or where your company's at if you're not a consultant. And I think it will help you prioritize, you know, what next steps should we do? What should the next phase, What what is the goal and how does that align up with the business priorities? So you should always be looking on how to improve and raise the level of maturity, but don't try to rush through it because you can end up um, causing more harm in the long run. Um, that can be, uh, a, you know, just something to, to get hard to get off the hump if, if you go the wrong way. The, the um, valley of despair, I think they call it, <laughs> right? When everybody gets excited about it and then suddenly there's this dip in expectations. It's a, it's a great tool, right? Capado can do so much. And I think that's where we see our clients get a little ahead of themselves, right? It's not something you're going to turn on in one day. So understand that you need to pay attention to these, uh, you know, influences and that, um, you know, it is a journey and it is going to take time. Um, and uh, we are looked at a lot to just help again, help them get through that um, initial kind of deployment. I always say it, it's not going to go well. It's probably going to take a little longer than you think it should. But from there, you iterate, continuously improve all the things that Blanca just spoke about to help continually setting the expectation on where you're going to go and how fast you're going to get there. Yeah, I think that is the part that um, is always a little bit challenging as a consultant too, right? Because it's like, even if you keep a pulse and you're understanding that this is a journey, it's like, how can you educate and get others to understand that, right? You want to lead with empathy, but you also want to be confident in that you know why you're promoting the direction that that the team needs to go. And sometimes it, you have to have some difficult conversations to try to educate those that are not necessarily always on the same page, um, because this would be, you know, a full team effort. It's not something that can be done in silos. You cannot, you know, stretch your team members' bandwidth so thin that they're not successful. And so you want to make sure you set proper expectations. With that said, I just want to say stay in touch, stay connected. Here is our Twitter and LinkedIn, so you can follow us. Again, Tom runs the um, Trailblazer Community Architect User Group in Philly, and I run the one here in Chicago. Catch us if we're virtual. And again, thank you, Capato. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you. Um, we're very excited for this day.
Have a great day.